Ho, ho, ho. It's a package from China. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the digital pad, the Slim Station GP40, the family pocket. Yeah, I already did a review about this, let's say similar product, but in this video, we're going to take a close look at the bigger brother of this thing. Yeah, the family pocket was a very interesting and surprising device, but yeah, today we're going to get, and they still keep using the, you know, the colors of the Nintendo Switch. But nevertheless, this thing is an all-round emulator. This means that it can play not only 8-bit stuff, but also other devices or let's say platforms like arcade, 16-bit and handheld. So we're going to take a close look and let's take a close look at the packaging itself. It includes, ooh, of course, we need to take a close look at the toilet paper metal. With some explanations how everything works. Then we're having an extra controller. It's quite interesting, so this device has an option to connect to the television and use like a game system. It's always very interesting to see in the control itself. Yeah, it's more like this a very strange D-pad. I like it. Shoulder buttons, everything that we're going to need. The micro USB cable, but as you can see over here, I just needed to show you. As you can see, it has a double micro USB. So this thing is specially made for, yeah, the controller. Control you of a cable you don't see very often, and of course a normal USB, a micro USB cable for charging. Okay, and a wristband that you can whip with. Okay, let's take a close look at the handheld. Okay, so the handheld, I already reviewed the family pocket, but it was more like the 8-bit version. And the thing was freaking awful. It had a lot of problems, like the analog sticks were pretty awful. And it seems to be with this version, or yeah, it seems to be that it has a completely different analog sticks. It has still the slider sticks, like in PlayStation Portable. But as you can see, they are a little bit higher. Can I pull off the caps? Yep. But as you can see over here, this is what you're going to get. Just the cheap sliders, nothing special. So over here we're having the ABXY volume control. Here we're having the menu button, select start, the D-pad. The D-pad isn't more like a mixed bag when you're looking at this. As you can see, I like this angle that it's going to get with this D-pad. It feels quite cheap, but I already played some with it. And with playing, I did notice that it is not super awful. Okay, at the bottom we're going to get the headphone jack. We're having the on and off switch over here. Okay, so on the sides we're having nothing. We're having AV out, micro USB, and we're having an HDMI port that we're going to try out because I'm in the previous model it didn't work. But that's something we're going to find out in this video. They even put a rubbery in it. It's more like it's not there, but it is. Before we're going to do any gameplay, I did know with the previous model we can open it up. And I can say that oh, man, is not really easy to do. And as you can see over here, we're having here our famous BL5C. It's more like the Nokia battery. You can find this thing basically in all of the handhelds. Not all of them or most of them. Just need to say it like that. Here we're having the CF card. So it seems to be that we're getting, and let's take a peek inside, a 60 gigabyte Kingston card. Yeah, it's very interesting. So this means we have the options to remove and add games. Well, I'm guessing we can do that. Okay get in yeah and we can still use batteries kind of weird option in this year that i'm making this video but okay okay let's put it together let's power it on let's see what we're going to get when you're looking at cheap devices like these yeah what you're going to get is most time in just a basic lcd inside and you can see it when i'm putting the camera on this view angle is that it is not great at all it's on four range it's in low resolution but yeah for the money this is what we're going to get Okay, so let's take a close look at the menu itself. So what you're going to get is this basic menu like the previous family pocket handheld. The, let's say the tiny version or the smaller one. So we're going to get Arcade, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, <laughs> Famicom. You can see there are a lot of different systems now, not only 8-bit. So far I know what you see is what you're going to get. You can add new emulators. So let's try some games and let's see how they are working. So far I understand is that there is no no menu where you can navigate in the settings so that is the only thing that i find a little bit of a bummer and even with the cheap handhelds nowadays we're going to get the options doing quick load quick save it's quite interesting to see and i think it's pretty awesome because this thing i think that gives you a completely new way to play your games not in one go but you can just save them so let's say you make a quick save and as you can see we can use different slots 
And so far I know of the previous model there were a couple of them. So I'm guessing this is more 5 slots for each game. So what I find very interesting with the cheap device nowadays that they run the games pretty good. And when I say pretty good it's not, it's not far above, it's really not perfect. You need to get yourself a more a very expensive handheld for that. But if you're looking at the D-pad, you can see I can walk around without any hassle. The same goes for the analog What I think always oh, find funny, as you can see they mapped the buttons to the second joystick. So what you can do, you can basically play like this. But not all of the buttons are mapped, as you can see. So they messed it up with that part. So this button is pretty pointless for this joystick. It's gonna blow you up. I wanted to blow you up. I wanted to blow you up. This kick man is here. But I don't know why it is, but you can always see that they mess something up. And especially with a Super Famicom, it's not working like it should be. You can hear that the game is not running full speed. The soundtrack are just stuttering. It's like freaking annoying. Holy crap, this sounds really awful. Okay, so let's try another game. But you can see that it runs pretty choppy. And you can just see that it is not running the full FPS. It's somehow playable, but I think this is not the experience you really want to have with a game like this. Or better said, with a system like this. But you know what? I'd rather to do this. Okay, like next up, let's try Mega Drive, or known as Genesis. But you can already hear that the sound is not like the original game. This is not like it should be. So let's check the FPS. I can't get an FPS counter somewhere because I can't reach the settings. The D-pad, you can feel that it's not awful. We can't play like this. Because basically it's one bottom map. The FPS is not bad at all. Alright, so let's play an Nightgrid game. Why is the screen flickering? Oh, this game was hard as hell, man. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's a bit tough, but it works. Damn you! The weird thing is that there is no Game Boy Advance on this. There's no delay in the audio. Alright. I'm gonna say the A-bit stuff does work very well. Okay, let's speed it up. Alright, so let's start with the HDMI function and the TV out. Yeah, you can see that it doesn't give any signal. So like with the previous model, they, they just had to add this HDMI port, but there is no software or there is no electronic inside this machine that has possibility to send out a signal. Quite disappointing. But as you can see is that it does work with the AV out, oh man, and the signal is very awful. But okay, this is the thing what you're going to get with cheap handhelds from our friends from China. Yeah. Shame about the HDMI, just ask, well, let's say four or five bucks more and just give us HDMI out, that would be so much better. Okay, so let's do a quick chit chat about the controller. I think this is very interesting because the controller itself, it's a familiar product. I've seen it before. It says also a 16-bit simulator, full speed, 70 frames. Yeah, right. So here at the back we can see that 
we don't have a way to add batteries so this thing is not wireless and that explains why we're going to get a cable yeah i was thinking hey maybe you can put a battery in it and there is a receiver in the handheld itself like this one but no sadly there isn't and this means only one thing is that it's a wireless wired controller yeah so that's the only thing that we can do with this um, this is the only thing that we're going to do another thing that's quite interesting as you can see here on the back we're having play one and play two option and this means that we can use it for play one and play two okay so a quick demonstration of the controller i find it very interesting um, there's only one big downside the cable or the connector itself is not very good so this means that when i'm letting it go you can see it doesn't give any input so i need to hold it like this yep <laughs> But I just wanted to show you that you can use it for player 1, when we switch back to player 2, it works as player 2. So in general it works, but the quality is so bad that it's not working. No. Such a bummer. Such a bummer. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to get with the Family Pocket. Multi-platform, very cheap handheld like the previous one. But I think it's just a bummer with the controller, it doesn't work. And the idea behind it is pretty cool. Yeah, the HDMI, I think it's very strange that they still have an HDMI port on it. But okay, I think there would be more like a shell they will use in the future or something else. They did improve the D-pad, they did improve the analog sticks. And it's pretty decent for a cheap device. Yeah, I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family. And yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of this. And I will see you in the next video.